Yes roomies, welcome back to another video and thanks for joining me. So in today's video we're going to be getting this enclosure behind me cleaned, planted and getting it ready for a new gecko species. Now if, for those who've been following the channel and checked out my room tour of Tim at Tim Reptiles Reptile Room, you'll know that I'm going to be getting a male neon day gecko. So he's going to be housed in here temporarily. I am planning on getting some females, so this won't be a permanent home. I'm looking to get a bigger enclosure and completely do that out from scratch. But because this terrarium has been used in the past, it needs a good clean. The glass needs wiping down. There's a lot of old substrate and I just basically packed it down when we moved into the new rainforest room. So there's plenty to get done in today's video because I am expecting the gecko in the next couple of weeks. So we've got that looking a lot cleaner. It was stinking the glass, but it was only because um, I used to house my green tree python in this. Um, when unfortunately, when before just before we moved, she passed away. But I just packed this tank up as it was and removed most of the substrate, and that was about it. And it has just been sat in my spare room up until now, just like this. So it's a lot cleaner. I just use some um, reptile safe. Um, antibacterial stuff and I'll leave a link for that or something similar in the description and I've just got it all over my hand. So the plans are, okay let's get it open, so I'll leave a link in the description for some of the videos around this tank. I don't think I ever filmed this tank because originally this was my uh, red-eyed tree frog setup before I started YouTube and then I stripped it out because I, I this was one of the first bioactive builds I made. But I stripped the original design out and made this for the green tree python, which used to have a water section, which in hindsight, I probably wouldn't recommend because every time they went to the toilet, I had to do a complete water change, which was just not very practical. But there's a false bottom, this bit here. So underneath there's some, you might be able to see if I can rip this out. This is just some weed membrane to separate the substrate. As you can see, it's just a great there. Um, so that creates a false bottom. So I'm not going to be adding the water feature back because there's the waterfall. So the water used to come out there, run down there into the stream and then fall into the water section. And there used to be a internal aquarium filter. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to rip these, well, or clip these plastic bits out because I want more room for planting. I've got some bigger plants that I want to use. And then I'm probably going to add some um, Volcanic mineral at the bottom is a drainage layer and then we'll fill the wa old water section up with substrate. But we've got plenty of areas for planting and we'll get that done as well. But I've been out today to get some plants from one of my local plant places which is Blasis and I'll leave a link in the description for them. Really good, definitely recommend going to check them out, support small business and they actually won an award for small businesses recently. But we've got a clean canvas now to work from so let's get cracking on with this video.
haven't seen me do this, I'll sort of say I removed the egg crate just so I could create plant in pocket. So the whole underside of this is completely hollow. So I needed to put some polystyrene sheets in there just so we could isolate the substrate because I didn't want to have to fill the entire bottom full of substrate. Now I can plant some bigger plants in there, which we have. But this was only like this because historically it did have a water section. And like I already said, we're not going to be doing that in this set. Now that's gotta look better, right? It's a lot greener, it was a lot, looked like a graveyard before. Now all I've done is added some volcanic mineral in the bottom as a drainage layer. I got some weed fabric for use for gardening and that'll just separate the drainage layer from the substrate. The substrate itself, I just use a combination, of, a combination of a cocoa fiber brick, some dried moss, some wood chip, and some cypress mulch as well, and just mix those together. Now, as this is an arboreal species, I want to add some more climbing opportunities as well as got some plants left over. Now, adding these climbing opportunities will just allow the gecko to thermoregulate a little bit better and obviously more interaction with the setup itself. So full disclosure is a new day because after cleaning this down, setting it all up, going out to get plants, the day run on and I was knackered. So we're a new day and we're going to carry on with this setup. Now where we left off last time was we obviously planted it, we cleaned it all down and pretty much got it set up 
the majority of it. But no bioactive setup is complete without a cleanup crew. But there is a slight problem in the UK at the moment. We can't get hold of any springtails for the love no money. Now, I don't know what's happened. The suppliers have just run out. Whether they've had mite infestations or something, I don't know. But luckily, I managed to go down to my local reptile store, Reptile Cymru, and picked up some um, wood lice. <laughs> Whew, it's too early in the morning. And we got five, six packs, so I think five grey, and they had one orange. So if you see my last video, I talked a little bit about this, about topping up your cultures of springtails and wood lice, and I did that in Castro's tank in one of the last videos. Now, I like to start a massive colony when I start this off, because generally, not all of them are going to survive, and I think I've seen somewhere that it's estimated about 20% will survive. Now, I will be topping these up in months to come as well, like I mentioned in the last video, and it's probably important that you do that too. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I'm really happy with the way that it's turned out. But like I mentioned earlier, it is going to be a temporary setup because I do plan on getting some females, two or three in the future. So I would like to get a bigger setup overall for the future plans that we have. Now we are going to be getting one male from Tim from Tim Reptile. And there should be plenty of space for him for the time being. And you could probably house him in here forever on his own. But I'd like to offer as much space as I possibly can. But if you've enjoyed today's video, there's still plenty to come on this setup. Now, in one of the next videos, I'll be going over the lighting, the heating, watering systems, and everything else in between. So if you're not yet subscribed to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss out. As always, I'll leave links down in the description for any of the items we've used in today's video if you want to go and buy something similar yourself. Now, these will be affiliate links, so if you do click on these links and buy anything, I will get a small commission. It doesn't cost you any more. It just helps support the channel making more videos like these. As well, I've got the Should Have Worn a Gecko t-shirt, we've got the Royal Python watercolour t-shirt on today, all made and designed by myself, and I'll leave a link down in the description. I've also got plenty of Gecko merch as well, which I'll pop some pictures up here, there, and everywhere, and I'll leave links down in the description. Again, if you want to help support the channel anymore, I'd really appreciate you picking one up, and again, all the money goes straight back into this room. But it won't be long before we get the gecko itself, so if you don't want to miss out on that, then hit that subscribe button. And I think that's enough of me waffling on for one video, and I'll catch you in the next one.